Good morning, my name is Sharon Lloyd. I'm the General Manager of The Circle here in New Zealand. I'm delighted to welcome you to today's virtual briefing with founders of Manaki, Andy Hamilton and Pat McPhee. Welcome to both of you. It's brilliant to have you with us today. Thank the you. theme of our series so far has been about around resilient leadership. And of course, a recurring question in the business community and to our speakers has been around concern for SMEs in the current environment. So today, Annie and Pat, we're thrilled to have you with us. We look forward to hearing more from you on your experience of starting up and launching the platform, as well as how you're supporting small business um, and what Manaki is doing around that. As always, I want to thank our sponsors for their support, Commonwealth Bank of Australia, IBM, Red Hat and ServiceNow. Thank you so much. We can't do what we do without you and we appreciate your ongoing support. A reminder to everyone that you can submit your questions through our Q&A feature and you also have the option to upload any questions with the thumbs up button. So I'm a little bit nervous about this. To start with, I'm going to share my screen and give you a teaser of Love Letter, which is a delivery of love to small business in New Zealand to say thank you and we're here with you. So here we go. Oh, and with that, I'll hand over to you, Andy. Kia ora, everyone. My name is Andy Hamilton. It's great to be here. Thank you very much, Sharon. Um, over the next 15 minutes, give or take, what we're going to do is just tell you a little bit about Manaki uh, and this platform that was created out of COVID-19. And my co-founder, one of the co-founders, Pat McPhee, is going to take us through that. Please give us questions as we go. Um, for many of you, uh, who may not know me, I was the co-founder of uh, the Ice House or one of the first employees of the Ice House. I'm just finishing up there and this thing called COVID-19 came along and Pat and I basically sat there and went, we need to do something for small business. And that's what Monarchy is all about. Um, please give us your questions. Uh, the conversation is, is what it's all about. Uh, and it's amazing, the thing I wanted to leave you with before Pat jumps in is you know, in times of struggle, it is remarkable what people can do if you ask for help, and secondly, if you get involved uh, in contributing. And that's what's been so special about Manaki. So, Pat, over to you, and then we'll um, uh, I'll moderate the questions. Hey, um, thanks, Andy, uh, and thanks everybody for uh, joining the call today. Um, so I guess just to kick off uh, a little bit about my background, um, prior to being on this uh, roller coaster ride that we're currently on with Manaki, uh, I was four and a half years as the global director of media uh, for Xero, uh, where my team uh, led uh, the company's global uh, brand narrative development, how we brought that to life in, more, uh, in market and uh, the strategies that we utilize to uh, create the high growth that their organization has uh, all around the world. I left there uh, in July last year to create Indigo, um, which is a design and innovation company. And uh, if we fast forward very quickly uh, to three weeks ago, um, we found ourselves in a startup, uh, had lost over a half a billion dollars worth of revenue um, and a couple of investors in the space of a week. And we thought, oh shit, uh, I think we're in trouble. Um, what came out of that was some pretty uh, robust and uh, very raw conversations about what do we do now. And I'm um, really thankful that we have a terrific group of advisors around us that um, help us implement uh, very quickly a series of measures that uh, consolidated our business and um, enabled us to continue operating while we looked for a way forward. What happened, what eventuated in the conversations that um, came about in, over the next couple of days was with Andy my, and myself was this idea that um, many small businesses were not fortunate enough to have that access uh, to the advisors that we did, to the strategies that we did to enable us to get into a position where we were solid uh, very quickly and then begin to think um, more proactively about what we do in the future. So the outcome of those discussions was um, really looking at uh, our collective expertise and capability across our organization understanding that um, Andy in New Zealand probably has the best Rolodex of uh, high profile business leaders and experts in the country, thanks to his 18 years of service to the country uh, through the Ice House. 
and that we have this incredible capability um, that you know I learned and developed while I was at Zero to be able to uh, innovate on the go, to be able to pivot, to literally uh, build the airplane while we fly it. And so um, deciding to really pull those resources together, what we came up with was a very simple proposition. And that proposition was to provide the average small business owner, the guy that owns the corner dairy, the people that do your plumbing, the electrician, with the opportunity to engage and speak to somebody um, that has a lot of business expertise specific to their industry, but also a lot of general business expertise and has been through crisis or can bring to bear um, intelligence from operating at the top echelons of business into a small business context to enable them to um, design a way forward. And uh, we decided on uh, a Thursday that we were going to do it. Um, on uh, Friday, we started designing. We developed over the Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Um, and by Wednesday, we had a brand and we went to market with a simple proposition of Manaki, which is a emergency business forum where small businesses can come, they can post the question uh, to the Manaki platform uh, and that question is sent out to a specialist and then they come back to the platform and they uh, are able to answer their question and we're getting about 3.5 answers per question and the quality of um, those answers is absolutely extraordinary. I think the thing that has been uh, really heartening to watch and when we actually felt like that we were making a difference is when we saw these, uh, you know, sometimes very heavy stories from small businesses that had mortgaged their homes, um, that had taken friends and family investment money, and now we're in a really perilous spot. And to see um, advisors and experts rally around them and um, to provide them with multiple lenses at looking at the situation and the problem that they were faced with, um, and multiple suggestions on how they might go forward, I mean, even some of them giving up their phone numbers and, and taking conversations offline. Um, and then to hear that those conversations are making a real difference. Um, that was when we knew that uh, the platform was starting, uh, starting to work. Pat, what, so, does, what does Manaki yeah. mean in, in, in Reo or in, in Te Māori uh, in terms of what does that really mean? So Manaki is, uh, is, a, is it's a cultural concept, right? And Manaki is um, originated from the Māori culture, the indigenous people of New Zealand. And uh, it's a concept that's developed from one of our cultural protocols. And that protocol is when people of one tribe come to visit you and you bring them into your home and you welcome them and you bring them into your village and you look after them and you take care of them and you take care of them to a level that actually um, you, would, you wouldn't do for anybody else. Like you esteem them as highly as you can esteem them. You uplift them and uplifting them and caring for them and for looking after them, you actually enhance the status, the prestige of those people. And also, you know, you do good for yourself. And, and in a world now where, you know, coming out of a large corporate organization, um, sometimes it feels like uh, you're very challenged to um, understand how you're going to innovate, develop new ideas, pivot into them and then meaningfully turn them into products and services um, because you know, there's generally a shortage of really good validated original ideas. Cultural frameworks, which is what we've developed with Monarchy, cultural frameworks um, that can be engaged with in an authentic way can uh, provide you with a really interesting way into solving a problem and some interesting lenses that wouldn't normally be available to you through a concept that maybe just like volunteering. Now, not, to vol not volunteering. Volunteers are very important to economies of the world and to our communities, but they're just added layers of cultural nuance that add richness to a story when you begin to tell that story to the world. So that's what Manaki means. Yeah, it's beautiful. So it's a platform that people can come, they can ask a question and they get an answer. Um, How's that been going in terms of metrics that we've been, you know, so far when we think about that? Like, so far we've been going three weeks, two and a half three weeks. weeks. Three weeks yesterday. Three weeks, three, weeks, three weeks yesterday, we were nowhere. We had nothing. In the course of a weekend, we developed a platform, a brand proposition, took it to market. We hacked social media um, through the partners in our business who are incredible social influencers and understand the trajectory of viral influence and how to put that to work for your business. 
And so we have had no paid media, no paid marketing, no paid promotion. And um, as of this morning, we have got 19,636 users uh, to the platform. They have engaged in 25,000 sessions, um, time on site, engaging with content in those conversations is, is 50,000 minutes on site in those three weeks. Um, and it's generated 67,000 uh, page views of the content that we've created. And that content is strictly question and answer content. Um, and we're also now uh, tracking about 41,000 people um, through, our, through our Facebook pixel. And so the intent is to remarket to those people with high value content that helps them uh, get answers to the highly contextual issues that are happening right now on a day by day basis, they change. So what we can do is surface the questions and answers back into those individuals um, in a way that's highly contextual to the challenge that they face minute by minute, um, hour by hour. There are 174 questions on the platform and 609 answers as of this morning. So we're tracking pretty good. And I th think it's interesting when we look at, at the, uh, the theme of the questions, when we first went up, there was how do I access funding from government was a big thing. How do I access the wage subsidies? You know, the, that's available to help me. It then moved to how do I negotiate with my key suppliers? What do I do with my landlord? when I'm locked out of the premises? What do I do with utility companies? And a good example there is, you know, we, we saw a business owner that had like five retail sites where the landlords were not answering his phone. And he asked a question, what do I do? And Anna Stratton, who is, is a really successful New Zealand entrepreneur and founder, an amazing lady, do you know what she said? Well, just stop your AP, stop your payments to the landlords and send them a note saying, I want to chat, but you're not returning my calls, so I'm not paying you any money until you actually pick up the phone. Um, HR challenges and issues was a, a, the next thing. And then what we've seen more recently are two themes. How do I access funding from, gov uh, from banks? And how do I go through that? But secondly, I've got all this downtime. What can I do now to prepare myself for the next phase? And it's, it's quite interesting how we're responding almost daily on that and also you know, do you want to talk, Pat, about the podcast and what we've done there? And yeah, maybe so, the Insta Instagram Live as well, I think is really interesting. Yeah. So what we're finding increasingly as the, the days go by is that um, at its core, we're kind of in the content game. We're in the game of, of surfacing a highly contextual, high value content to a specific problem that a business, a small business is having at a period in time. And um you know, it's a pretty old school model if you think that you're going to answer all your questions on your own proprietary platform, drive everybody back and kumbaya, you'll build a big community. What we should all understand now is we're in this time in the space where communities are distributed across many different channels. And so that's the approach that we've taken in engaging them. So we produce content quite prolifically for a volunteer team that's sort of just sort of pivoted into this um, in the last uh, three weeks. But we, as Andy mentioned, and we have the, the podcast series, which is hosted by uh, a journalist, a well-known journalist here in New Zealand. She is um, hosting from her home on the West Coast beach of Piha and beaming in people from all around um, New Zealand. Um, uh, and and the, and the content that she talks about uh, spans the, the spectrum from, from very practical and what do I do now? And here is the individual that designed the go-to-market strategy for the app TikTok, and he's telling you how to run uh, a, a social media marketing campaign and the very um, pragmatic one, two, three steps uh, along the way, all the way through um, to guys like uh, the, the Minister of Small Business, um, Stuart Nash, who was on yesterday um, talking about the latest small business um, uh, relief fund here in New Zealand. And then, so that's just one channel that's predominantly uh, through Facebook. And what we understand though in our market, because we do under, actually understand the market and we're not just winging it, is that there are a number of micro businesses, approximately 300,000 in New Zealand, um, that are just one man banders, right? And so, and a lot of those businesses are increasingly on Instagram. So what we've begun to do uh, every night for the last, I don't know, week, <laughs> it's just that timelines have been so compressed. Um, Am I ever gonna a, be, Am I ever going to be asked to go on Instagram Live? 
Am I not cold enough? Yeah, you, if you get a haircut, you might, we might let you on. Um, but we have Instagram Lives um, every night. And what we're doing there is interesting also. We have um, part of the partner group, uh, group of business partners in, in Indigo, the parent, the, the parent company of Monarchy. Uh, we have Adi Sevier, who is a current All Black, one of the best players in the world, um, probably the best Lucy in the world. Sorry for all your Australian rugby fans out there. Um, then uh, we also have Roger Tuivasa Shek, um, who's arguably one of the best rugby league players in the world, plays in the NRL. And we have Dylan Belcher, who is um, one of this country's most legendary basketball players, and Monty Beetham, who's a partner in the business as well, who is the captain of an of a NRL team here. And so what those guys do is they just basically pull all their influence to get us the biggest influences in our world onto the platform, and they interview us about what we're doing. And so we've seen that halo that we've created around Manaki as a brand, um, you know, be able to, to gain a lot of gravitas inside of that small business community because of the halo that these celebrities bring um, to our movement and to our mission. And so those are also going very well. Uh, the other thing that we're doing now and, and we'll, we'll do increasingly towards uh, the end of this week is we'll just begin to surface a lot of the really high value Q and A's that are coming onto the platform, the questions and the best answers, put them back in front of everybody to drive them back into the community to rebuild that engagement. And we'll also look at ways of being able to have those conversations, Q and A's in the places where the people are, whether that's Messenger, whether that's a DM and Instagram, but we've got, we've got to find a way to hack technology to get us there as well. But content is definitely prolific for us now. So, Pat, a couple of questions that are coming um, from uh, attendees. Um, but the first thing I just wanted to ask you is how do people get involved in Manaki, which is manaki.io in terms of the website? If they want to get involved, how do they get involved? Um, so uh, if you're a small business and you'd like to ask a question, it's really simple. You go to the site, create an account. You can do that with your Google account or your Facebook account or with, with your email. Um, go to the, the question widget that's on the homepage, enter your question, um, you know, assign it to a category. And what immediately happens is in the background is that then your request is sent off to uh, one of over 150 experts that we now have on the platform, incredible business leaders. They then jump straight back into the platform, answer your question, 3.5 uh, uh, answers to, to every question. Very good answers that like give you a really robust view on what you could do as a small business. Um, from yeah, an advisor think, perspective, oh, sorry, you go. Uh, yeah, so look, one of the interesting things is when people ask us, well, how do you select the advisors and experts? There's a couple of things there, like having 20 years working with small business. Um, I don't think it's all about having the really flash, amazing people who might have forgotten what it's like to be a small business. You do need those famous people, but you also need the functional people who can actually solve problems. So, you know, it's interesting. We've got three heads of talent and HR from Vector, Auckland City Council and ACC who are incredible so the head of people and talent incredible advisors on the platform because they deal with so many hr issues they can help the business owners get right to the heart of how they actually react in the situation anna stretton i talked about uh, we've got leslie preston who owned until recently batch care uh, peter cullinane from lewis road and stefan lepionka uh, who was charlie's a bunch of amazing people the time is quite right where people have you know, 15, 20 minutes a day, half an hour a day to sit on the platform and provide some advice in the areas like business growth, uh, digital and tech, uh, food and beverage retail, uh, international, HR and talent, COVID-19 support. And so I think it's a really interesting how you collapse the supply chain to enable that. But the first question, given I can sort of say maybe, Pat, you were a corporate guy once, if zero is such a thing, how did we develop the platform so quickly and what can large organizations learn from this? Yeah, that's a, I think the platform um, is informed by the first thought, right? And the first thought is that we're responding to a massive problem. So I think that you have to really, when you're faced with a situation like this, when you want to pivot hard and, and innovate, um, you, you have to understand the moment that you're in. And so that's what we understood really clearly. We saw it coming. We were, we were thinking about this, you know, it sounds like a very short period of time, but it was, it's actually like dog years now. It's, it's, um, it's actually, that's even shorter. But anyway, you get what I mean. 
Um, so we were thinking about this probably a week and a half to two weeks um, ahead of it becoming our reality. And um, what I've learned in my time at Zero, because Zero was very much an organization that had weaponized speed and we liked to build the plane while we were flying it. And so my team inside of Zero were very adept at working um, in a highly agile and highly innovative and highly responsive manner. And so I think the first thing that uh, large corporate organizations need to do is they need to be able to enable and empower their teams to be able to work with a level of fluidity, to leave a bit of time in everybody's day and everybody's week in terms of the hours that you can assign to, to, to be working on projects that might just sit outside of the norm or to encourage people to think a little bit differently about challenges inside of their organizations. And so if you develop that mindset, that agile innovators mindset, when it comes time to innovate, it's not a problem to pivot because your people are very, uh, very used to and they've gotten in the cadence and the operational excellence of being able to pivot and switch. So that was part of why we could pivot because inside of our small business, we were very used to on a day-to-day -day basis throwing resource here, throwing resource here, executing, executing, delivering, delivering, and we got into a cadence of that. So that was the first thing. We were able to be really responsive when the problem came along because we had that inside of our organizational capability and inside of our culture. Practically, how did we um, build a platform in that very short period of time? It was really having, again, that structure and that time to be able to lock off a group of people to focus on its delivery, right? If we had been trying to do it, everybody a little bit at a time, it would have taken us weeks to get away instead of days. We said, no, you guys here, this is you. For the next four days, you must go and execute this and we must do our very best. So platform, there's a platform person in there, there's a design person in there, there's a brand person in there. We are sprinting from Thursday to next Tuesday to get this complete but very MVP I don't know if there's a term for less than MVP, <laughs> but whatever that term is, that's what we had. We are sprinting to have that in market by Tuesday. We failed. We got to market by Wednesday. But one of the things that we do really well also when you have an organization that's dedicated to that type of operation is that you learn and you process in real time. So we did that. We managed to get the platform away. I think the, the killer for us there was a series of killers, actually. If I could go into it really quickly. Number one was creatively, the concept of monarchy is different and gives the overall um, concept a lot of depth and value. Um, number two, um, the credibility that their advisors brought to the platform through Andy's connections um, immediately put credibility on number three, the brand that we created that leveraged those two things, the people and the culture. And so the creative execution, number four of that brand was absolutely world-class for the period of time that we had it, um, had to develop it. And then the way that we delivered that into the market through the influences um, on the day that we launched enabled us to hack what people would normally have to pay millions of dollars to do. And so those, you know, those five things happening in a very uh, high pressure, um, very time compressed, but highly managed, you know, two stand-ups a day kind of, kind of process, is how we got there in that short period of time. And what can large organizations learn from this? Because, you know, obviously I've worked with a lot of large organizations, even though the ice house is relatively small. Um, you know, for me personally, the speed by which we as a team went day by day and how we just accepted if it wasn't right, we'd improve it as we went. But what can large organizations, banks, governments learn from what Monarchy is about? Oh God, where do you start? I think that the, the, the big thing for a, a corporate organization is that, you know, your performance machine, your performance engine is what your business is based around. You know, if you're a bank or if you're a large corporate, you know, your, your, your whole business model is engineered to, to deliver that performance machine, you know, that performance output, your product, your service, whatever it is. And um, you tend to optimize everything inside of your organization, your people, your processes around that. And so inside of that, it's very hard to innovate inside of a performance machine because all the resource, all the money is uh, pointed towards the thing that keeps the lights on, the thing that keeps the shareholders happy. I think the biggest lesson, you know, and I've always, I've been a long sort of proponent and believer of this, 
is that you need to have pockets of innovation inside of your organization. You need to have and be able to recognize people that stand for that, let them be champions for it, and then have a process to be able to identify and execute high value innovation propositions when they come through your door. I think those are the things that, I, that's my understanding anyway yeah. of the things they could do better. Yeah, and I think like cause-driven initiatives, there's no doubt Monarchy is a cause-driven initiative. And, but you know, with your leadership, we've, and we've always been driven on, let's do, these, do this excellently, let's do it beautifully, and good things will come from it. And you know, when you see the love letter at the end and you saw the teaser, it is incredible when you see that output, how amazing that is, I think, is a productive output. But what people don't know is, you know, we didn't get that many people who turned us down, but we did get people who turned us down. But if you keep focusing on being cause driven, being, I think, really um, reactive, um, hustling like anything, good things will come from it. <clears throat> As a result of that, we signed a partnership with IAB, which is the, the group that represents all the digital advertisers in New Zealand. As a result of that and doing other, you know, the love letter, you know, I scored a one-on-one a, a -on -one interview with the Prime Minister that was filmed last Thursday, that streamed yesterday, and that has already had 210,000 views over 20 minutes. And so you do good things, you're really cause-driven, you hustle, then I think things can come from that. Now, there's a really good question. How do people find out about Monarchy? Um, and Monarchy, how we do that is, is that we launched via Instagram, Facebook. We put it on LinkedIn. Um, we've got TVCs running in New Zealand, radio adverts, the Prime Minister's podcast. Um, I don't know, Instagram lives. Um, we haven't yet done formal partnerships beyond that. Uh, we are talking to Tourism New Zealand, but really Facebook has been an IAB, TVNZ stuff have been pretty amazing in terms of getting on board and sharing that. Um, and guess what? There's lots of course driven things happening at the moment, which is fine too. So we, you know, I think our biggest concern is not to solve people's challenges. It's how we get SMEs to put their hand up and say, I need help. I can scale the advisor pool. I, I don't have a concern about that. I could have 500 advisors on that site for the next three months, all vo volunteering their time. The challenge is how we get SMEs coming and actually asking questions. And I think the ratio is probably 10 to 20 times more people watching than asking questions right now on the site. So we've got to encourage them to ask those questions. Now let's, Pat, let's look at a couple of other questions here. Um, are we working with uh, Potama? And can you provide any specific intelligence about Māori owned SMEs? Yeah, um, uh, thanks for the question. No, we're not working with Tara Potama. We um, are completely self-sufficient and um, have funded this to our, uh, entirely ourselves. Um, but in the spirit of Manaki, we are also um, always looking for partnerships that add value to um, you know specific business groups or business communities, and so. Um, as to the metric around Māori businesses, what we've found actually is that um, as we've ramped up some of our efforts into the social channels, Instagram um, and Facebook in particular, that surfaced a lot more um, small business owners of different ethnicities, in including those groups. Um, so it's been really interesting to see. One of the insights that I found quite interesting um, when we launched, uh, we launched big into LinkedIn, um, but we, we very quickly learned is that LinkedIn is not the place where small businesses are hanging out. That's the place where we are all talking to each other about how cool we are. And so <laughs> we had to get out of there pretty quick. But, you know, the advisors in there are really cool and they've um, helped us to put the basis of our value offering together. You know, Pat, I think I got more shares than Adi Sevier on LinkedIn. That's because Adi Sevier only um, started his LinkedIn account on the day that we launched. <laughs> I think he'll kill you now. <sighs> no, don't tell him. He won't watch this. Um, one of the questions was, are there any sectors that are asking for help more than others? So initially, yes, tourism. Um, uh, quite a few builders asking for help. Uh, retailers, uh, food and beverage. But there's no massive consistency of any one sector other than us knowing the tourism sector is going through a lot of pain. Um, so, you know, so I, I wouldn't say there's too many patterns there. Uh, another question, we were asked, 
how do you collapse and connect the owners to the experts? And I think, I think the way I can answer that is if you get people to ask a question, we've got an auto response tool that we use in, in the back end. We've assigned experts to categories like food and beverage, and they get an email immediately when a question is posed that's been moderated and approved, and then they can just jump on the site and answer that question. The other thing we do between Ty, myself, and my wife, Carla, is we look at all of the questions that have been asked, and then if we don't think we're getting as good answers as possible, then we go out to specific advisors and say, hey, can you jump on this and can you jump on that? And, you know, I'll give you such a good example this morning, which I think is incredible, that, you know, there was a challenging legal question on one of the sites, and one of the legal advisors said, hey, let's take that off the platform. I'll do it pro bono. Let's just see if we can help this person get through that issue. And I think that's, that's pretty remarkable. So I think we use technology to enable immediate answers. And then you get the wisdom of the crowd where an Anna Stratton, a Leslie Preston, you know, uh, a Stefan Lepionka will all give different perspectives. And if I give you another example, um, uh, there was a guy who does big trucks, sells big trucks, big Toyota trucks, Tundras. And he was thinking about doing a TV advertisement um, campaign and he wanted to get some advice. When you look at the stream that he got around how to build community in this modern age, how to get content out, it was epic. He had three or four leading agency leaders saying, this is the way I would think about it. And of course, Pat's answer was the best, um, but that's because I told him what to say. So um, now another question is, how do you balance the requests for practical business advice and the crossover to mental health issues for small business owners and operators? This is a big question. Yeah. Um, like that's one thing that we definitely need to do a better job of actually is to get um, a few more mental health practitioners onto the platform. I think that, um, you know, as we know, and as a lot of the uh, research showed, showed us when I was at zero, that um, entrepreneurship for small businesses um, and, you know, small business leaders um, can be a very solitary and isolating experience um, at the best of times, let alone when you're forced into isolation and um, you have to close your business. And so um, mental health, we know, is a big issue. Um, so we're partnering where we can and there's um, some great initiatives starting to happen here in New Zealand, um, one through um, Zero that Craig Hudson, the MD of Zero here, um, launched just last week, uh, which was free mental health support for their subscribers. Um, but I think, you know, like all of these things, there is the spectrum where, um, uh, you know, the best that we can offer right now in terms of our platform is, uh, you know, an ear of a person that you know that really cares in a community that know you, that you know is really there to help you. Um, practically, we have to do a better job of getting mental health professionals on there to help guide people through it. Yeah, and look, we are, we are really worried about, like, small business owners at the best of time are isolated. This is way, way worse. And so it's something that we are, we carry that very, very heavily and are worried about it. So I think Pat's sent us a challenge around what we can do going forward. And this is what these talks are really good about and, and doing. Now, next question from Richard Laverty. Good to see you, Richard. You, the New Zealand government announced yesterday one of the initiatives was a $25 million fund to support business advice and consulting um, for businesses in New Zealand so that they can get that transformation support. And the question was, are we going to work with that channel? And, and look, the answer is yes. We didn't create Monarchy that, you know, because we wanted to make money, but, you know, we are trying to build up that catchment of support to SMEs and to do it at scale. So we will be a bit in there. Yes, we will uh, make an application. Uh, and we're looking forward to partnering with government because, you know, our job is to build that scale and answer those questions and, uh, and keep doing that. Now, Pat, next question, which we haven't thought about much. What next for Manaki? Go to Australia? Well, yeah, um, well, a, a couple of things, right? We, we are prepared now and our platform's in a good place and organizational structure's in a good place now that, um, yeah, we can package up uh, what we have and um, launch it into the East Coast of the US or um, into Australia. 
Um, so that's definitely a possibility for us. Uh, where our heart is and what our care is all about, though, is um, born out of this country. And so certainly we want to be here for the long haul um, with the small businesses uh, of New Zealand. But we know that with the right partnerships um, and the ability to be able to execute um, an approach that is not too dissimilar from what we've done, we could certainly um, see this platform being easily deployed into other markets. Um, strategically, tactically, what will we do? Um, we will continue to um, provide high quality answers and surface those answers to small businesses wherever they, where they need them. And so one of the big things that I'm currently thinking about from a technology perspective is just how do we distribute our um, advisor base uh, and access to them across multiple platforms simultaneously um, so that, you know, wherever you are, if you're in Facebook on Messenger and, and you want to ask a question, you can. If you see something on the television and you want to drop us a WhatsApp or a text, you can. Like, I just want us to be able to be in every single channel so that we're not employing this, like, I love what we've done, but it's also really frustrating for me to see us um, have a model where we've built this uh, website and we're trying to convert everybody at a single point in time, a single place in time, um, when I know that's not the, <laughs> the right model to be executing, but to, um, you know, the point of being quick and agile to market into solving the problem, you know, we are helping now tens of thousands of businesses get through with a model that I think is actually inferior. So I want to sprint again, to try and get that technology play um, right up to the mark so that we can just continue to offer more great advice wherever people need it. Yeah, and I think it's great. And Kate, you asked a really good question, which is that some owners just actually want to talk to someone and get some in-depth advice. The intention of the platform uh, that we started was to help with instant answers and input to enable the owner to know that someone cares for them and give them some input around what they might do from there. But we're also mindful that some people need more than that. And, you know, at this stage, Monarchy doesn't do that. But we do refer people. Um, we, and we've had to manage that so that we don't get the advisors who are just coming to, to fill their consulting gigs going forward. And so, you know, we just had to be careful there. But what we would always do is care for the person. And if that meant we could refer to someone or we could refer them back to the regional business partners, which is a a support service in New Zealand, then we would do that as well. Another really good question is how do you manage conflict of interest between the advisors and existing investments and businesses that are seeking advice? You know, in New Zealand, we're too small to um, be like totally pure, like you might find in the UK. That doesn't mean we don't manage the conflict. I mean, I personally am involved in so many companies, so many initiatives. I'm a minister for, I'm an advisor to the minister for small business. You know, I, I just in the end take Monarchy to my heart and go, I need to be able to look at myself and say, I'm not screwing the scrum. And so that management of conflict is really important, but also being a, 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 the right sort of citizen uh, is, I think, more important. And knowing when to put the hand up and go, hey, you know, I'm conflicted here. And like people give, you know, I think people like Monarchy because we give a toss and we're getting involved and we're trying to help. That also means that there are challenges around those conflicts. Like when I apply to um, government for access to this funding or we do it Monarchy, you know, I need to put my hand up. And, you know, last night on a call uh, with um, some government officials, I said, please don't bring up this fund with me on the call because I, I'm conflicted with Ice House and Monarchy and I just don't think it's appropriate that I'm involved in any of those conversations. Um, this is a really interesting one. With your international exposure, how is, Ki how is Kiwi business responding to our peers offshore? Is there something different about Kiwi culture? Hmm. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. I, I think that um, what's been showing up, you know, in the last, whatever it was, 18 months with the several different crises that we've had to deal with is that our isolation has um, borne out some unique qualities and brought out some new unique qualities that we probably weren't aware of before we got into those situations. Christchurch was a terrible situation. You saw this um, intent to rally around the community affected by that. And I think that's, you know, started there, this, this, idea of being able to rally around and give support um, 
when we're in the we're, when they're in the crunch. Um, certainly, I know other that's not unique to New Zealand, but I just think that you know, born out of our little island nation, our sense of patriotism and um, you know that 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 blood that sort of runs through our veins because of that that attitude of being here by ourselves and and being able to lean into each other to get through these situations. I think that is a little bit different, but if you want my honest opinion on what's really unique is that um, we have an indigenous culture here, the Maori culture that um, has a, a pretty good platform and a fairly good standing um, to be able to express itself and to be able to influence the way that we live day to day. And, and it's recognized and increasingly um, it's valued. And that point of difference as we begin to understand its value and being able to conceptualize that into the mainstream is something that um, I think that we're beginning to get a greater appreciation of. And it's something that I think Manaki is um, currently and in real time being very instrumental in achieving. That's an awesome answer. So um, before we show you the, the live TVC that we released yesterday, our love letter to New Zealand business and Sharon is getting nervous. Just a couple of final things. Thanks Pat for sharing. Thank you for everyone for giving us the opportunity to share something that we are really passionate about. Um, we have no intention to charge companies and we have no intention to pay advisors, but we'll go through a sprint. We'll see by the end of the year where we're at and we'll observe, you know, what is next and what is right for Manaki and for that community. What has been the most moving moment for us in the last three weeks? Well, when the platform didn't crash, that was quite good, Pat, wasn't it? And I think the moving, the moving moment is, is that when we see it's resonating, every day in the beginning of the morning, end of the day, the whole team gets together. And just to see New Zealanders coming in behind with what the Manaki movement is about means every day is an incredible moment. For me personally, it's when I see an owner getting an answer that will help them. That's what makes a difference. Right, Sharon, drum roll. This is something that the team, the incredible team at Manaki put together, uh, what you saw a, a glimpse of, but this is the actual TVC and that's been um, streamed as well. This is a love letter to small New Zealand businesses. We get us up in the morning, do our hair, yeah. make our eggs on toast. You know our names. And our coffee orders. Fix our plumbing. Teach our kids. You entertain and inspire us. You help us get on with our lives. But life has changed. You are the backbone of our country. And your livelihood has been threatened. We will not stand by and watch it happen. We are Manaki, your support network of business experts. Give us your questions and frustrations. Opportunities, fears. Share the burden. And together, we will find solutions. Monarchy is an offering of care and respect. It strengthens the mother, both of those who give it and those who receive it. So let us do what we can to help you. And we will come out of this stronger. Thank you. <laughs> it Love makes it. me cry. <laughs> yeah. I'm kidding, sorry. Hi. Hi everyone, I'm Tanya. I'm the uh, CEO of the Trans Tasman Business Circle. I'm sitting in Sydney and I am so proudly watching what you unbelievable Kiwis always manage to do from a, an incredibly hard situation. You are really, honestly, as a, as, as a Trans Tasman Business Circle organisation across the Tasman, you really make us proud. You've taken something, you've created something from nothing and you're solving a problem and helping thousands and thousands of people. And from the circle to you guys, keep going. We're doing the same. We're just creating something out of nothing. We pivoted in 48 hours so we could give all of our audiences and all of our members and guests and their friends and their friends' friends something that they could come on and, and hear from business leaders. And we didn't know what we were doing, but we did it with an incredible team. So when you talk about passion, and innovation and purpose. It's exactly the values we share. So thank you for being with us. We would love to help you guys spread your message loud and clear. You're doing great work. I know I shouldn't have talked so much, but I was very taken by what you're doing. And small business is the backbone of both our countries and we can't ignore them. So 
hope you guys get to Australia and whatever we can do to help would be great. Now, there's a poll. So everyone, please fill in your poll. Um, I don't need to read the, um, the questions. Um, we're going to actually uh, give you the results very quickly. But on behalf of us at The Circle, thank you again. Um, I don't know what to say. It was just awesome. It was really awesome and inspiring. So keep it up. And uh, there are your poll results. So most of you, oh, okay, innovative. Yes, government doing a great job. Um, 12 months. Okay, interestingly, last week when we started the series, everyone was looking at six months. So it's interesting that it's gone up to 12 months. And yes, did the V event today meet your objectives? Thank you very much. We are so happy that you joined us. Just thanks to our sponsors, we could not do this. Um, like you guys can't do it without the support of the corporate sector. So Combank, IBM, Red Hat, and of course, ServiceNow. Thank you. And I'm passing over to Andy and Pat to have the last words. See you next time. Um, yeah, last words. Um, once this is done, get out and support a small business. You know, every single day you drive past thousands of them and you don't go in. So let's change that. Let's go into a small business. Let's buy our veggies and our fruit locally. Let's get our cars fixed locally. Let's, you know, put our kids in local daycare. Like whatever we can do to support people that are inside of your your little ecosystem, spend your dollar there, spend your dollar with them. And um, that'll be instrumental in making sure that our small businesses, our communities, our families bounce back. Awesome. Thank